Hey YouTube, and welcome back to my channel. Alright guys, so for today's video, we're going to be talking about Euphoria, Season 2, Episode 5 to be exact. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you go watch it before watching this video because we will be spoiling it because I don't know how to talk about it without spoiling it, so just keep that in mind. But I'm at my desk, okay, for this video because we need to talk about it, okay? We need to talk about this episode, we need to break it down because this one... This episode was, it was wild. I don't know a better adjective to describe season two, episode five of Euphoria, except for wild. Like, I was at the edge of my seat. I'm pretty sure a lot of you were as well. Literally, I tweeted, I was like, my anxiety level should have been monitored during this episode, because I'm sure they were through, through the roof. Like, there's no reason that I'm like, like finding myself feeling anxious over fictional characters, over fictional situations, over cut, edited, already sent to the presses information. Why am I stressed out? But I was stressed out. And if you've seen the episode, like you know what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about it. I took some notes. I got my handy dandy notebook right here. I got a cute little pen um, in case I need to add something in. And I don't know. This honestly is just cute to look at. So look at my pen. Thank you. It has eyes. God bless. So this episode of Euphoria was called Stand Still Like the Hummingbird. They all have episode names and I guess the names kind of tie into either like the theme of the episode or like the theme of references that uh, Sam Levinson uses to pull into the episode. And we'll talk a little bit about a theme that I did catch. I'm sure there are other ones that maybe I haven't seen in order to connect the dots, but I did catch one so we will talk about it. And I just do a little segue since I'm talking about Sam Levinson and the way that he incorporates themes in the episodes. I have seen a few uh, interviews about Euphoria and just like the way the characters describe Sam Levinson's like creative process. And apparently like he is a cinematic buff. Like he knows a lot of things from cinema, like movies and TV shows, things that are like not now, like things that are back in the day, things that are now as well that he incorporates into the episodes. Like so for fans of things that he's using can be like, oh, okay, that's a nod to, you know, this, that, and the third. And I caught a nod in this episode. So like I said, I'll talk about it, but I just wanted to throw that out there in case you didn't know, like those things are purposeful. Like he t he goes out in his arsenal of like cinema and he's like, what can I pull in and make people be like, okay. So just a little fun fact. So jumping right into it, so the opening scene, literally I wrote opening scene wild because what, the, you know, and I understand the premise of the show, right? Like I understand Zendaya, the beautiful Zendaya is portraying a drug addict, right? And drug addicts are not like upstanding citizens all of the time. Like they have outbursts, they have quirks that are not necessarily indicative of their age. And that really goes to show um, like the effects of drug use. Like drugs, I, I will say drugs like don't care who you are. They don't care how old you are. They don't care like how much status you have, like what race you are. Like they treat everybody typically the same. So it's interesting to see with Zendaya, I feel like she's playing a 16, 17 year old person, kid. And to see her cursing and yelling and screaming and like in her mom's face, I was like, whoa. Okay, wild. I just can't even imagine like even being on drugs, yelling at my dad like that. Yo, like, yo, like she was F, F bomb, F bomb, F bomb, F bomb, you know? And the mom too, like, and so her sister Gia as well, like they all are just yelling back and forth and cursing. And I guess that shows like what kind of parenting is happening in the household. Cause like Gia, from what I know is not on drugs. I mean, we did see one of those episodes previous to this one uh, where she was smoking weed. Was it this, was that this season? They were at like a Halloween, no, that was last season. Okay, it was last season. There was like a Halloween party and Gia was smoking weed at the Halloween parties. But other than that, like that hasn't been her storyline that she's like does drugs. So this is just like their household. Their mom lets them curse? I don't know. Like, that's just not how I was raised. And you know, I'm not here to like deconstruct. Well, I am gonna deconstruct the household because I got some notes about the household, but 
the yelling and the screaming at your parent, the cursing. I'm an adult and I would not now in my big age feel comfortable yelling and screaming at my dad. So that just took me, it threw me, you know? Okay, I just wanted to cover that. Like the cursing, the scream, ooh, that was wild to me. All right, let's talk for a second. Cause I know we were just, we were kind of, I was just referencing about the mom and like the way she's raising her kids to make them, you know, feel like it's a comfortable place to yell and scream and use curse words and profanity and things like that. The mom to me is wild in the sense that how do you have a drug addict daughter who has been to rehab, okay? This is, so now it's something that you're aware of, right? How do you have like a fresh out of rehab kid? And, I, and it is fresh out of rehab because later on in the episode, a character is like, oh, Rue, how long have you been clean? And she's like, oh, since summertime. Not two years ago. Not, you know what I mean? Like not, oh, I've been clean 10, five years. No since summertime so some seasons ago not even a year like a, some seasons ago how do you have a freshly out of rehab kid and you not checking their room when I, when I tell you if it was me every time my daughter went to school every time my kid went to school i would be flipping flipping the bed spread over you know i'm peeling back the carpet if i need to because what do you mean i took you to rehab rehabilitation and your young age, and you're gonna come back in this house and I don't know what's going on. Talking about some Rue, I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you. She said that in a previous episode. Rue, I'm just, I'm just so proud of you. Whole time Rue got 50 grand, I don't even know how much, but like thousands of dollars worth of drugs in a suitcase in your home. And it's not like she's taking it with her everywhere she goes. She's not dragging this suitcase to school. This is in the home. And you're like, Rue, I'm so proud of you. When, when her sponsor came to the house the other day to meet her mom, and this is in previous episodes, we're on episode five, and I know this is kind of, we're just starting off this series of us talking about the episode, but I'll reference back to other episodes, because if you're watching this, I'm assuming you've seen those as well, so just, just stay along with me. But when the sponsor that she has came with her to her house to meet her mom, and the mom's like, how's she doing? Girl, what? She is sweating. She is sweating, she's wearing a jacket and she's sweating. So is she hot or is she cold? Drugs. Cause she obviously don't even know how she feels. You talk about some, how's she doing? The, the mom throws me. Fun fact though, fun fact about the mom, um, I saw on social media, so the actress that plays the mother, I saw on social media that people are going to her DMs like on Instagram and DMing her telling her, Rue is on drugs, Rue got a suitcase in your house. Like they're like snitching on Rue and she had to come out and be like, I am an actress. This is a television show. These are not real situations. Stop snitching. <laughs> you know, and I thought that was so funny because I know people are really watching like, girl, you need some help. Let me help you out. Your daughter is tripping. She was really tripping in this episode. I just wanted to mention that. Like, the I just cannot wrap my brain around how you don't know. Because it's like one thing of like, to begin with, you didn't know, right? Like maybe like you didn't know she was starting drugs, you didn't know she was like doing drugs in the beginning, but you've had her in rehab. What you mean you not checking that room? It's, listen babe, privacy got you, love you. I understand you're, young, you're a young adult, you need privacy, or not a young adult, you're a young kid on the way to young adulthood. You need your privacy, I hear you, but, I took you to rehab. I need to look in your room. <laughs> At first she's like, okay, drug test me, drug test me. And let me tell you what I felt during that moment. Because we know as the audience, like Rue is doing drugs. So if she were to get a drug test, like it's gonna say she's doing drugs. But the fact that she offered that up, like go ahead, drug test me. You know what it made me think? It made me think like when I'm onto something, like whether that be in life, whether that be in intimate relationships, whether that be in friendships, and you're onto something and you feel like you know what's going on and you challenge a person about that and they come up with a, well, go through my phone then. Or like, well, come, come with me then. Check the messages or whatever the case may be. And you're like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't because if you was really doing something, you wouldn't want me to check it, right? That reverse psychology Rue dropped on her mom. Now, I know it didn't work because at this point, Rue's mom like knows tea. But like that reverse, ooh, that threw me, girl. That had me sitting there like, I'm gonna check the phone anyway. Try it again. Try it again. Zendaya didn't make it bad for all of y'all. Try it again. Give me the phone. Yeah, I still wanna see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause like, we know she lying, but she's a drug test. 
I digress, okay? I thought it was crazy too. It, it threw me for a loop as the person watching that Jules was the one who snitched on her. And like, that was interesting because, you know, at this point, we as the audience, we not really messing with Jules too hard, you know, because you not mad because Zendaya a drug addict. Like, regardless if you know she doing drugs or not currently, like, she her, her energy is off. And she knows her energy is off because that's the conversation she was having with Elliot to begin with. That kind of started their bond. Like, what's going on with Rue? Like, does she like you? I don't think she's enjoying what we do together physically. Like, you having all these questions about her demeanor. So to be, to take it so personally when she's like, I can't stand you right now. Like, I thought that was interesting because like, like that's like couples fight like couples have arguments and like I didn't think what she said was like that crazy but I guess Jules thought it was that crazy and and Sam Levinson with the cinematography showed it and I'm talking about a previous episode right now like when they're in the car and this is the episode before this one episode four when she's like oh I'm just just drop me off home like I don't want to be here like I can't stand you right now or whatever and like that red light goes across Jules's face like she appears to be sad but it's like it's a foreshadowment of like oh but I'm angry and I got you you can't stand me I got something for you and we see what she had for her in episode five the episode we're talking about today where it's Jules that's the one who told her mom like okay cool so now Zendaya is like oh I know you know so like where's my stuff right and she, that that whole like freak out moment where she's like throwing stuff and breaking stuff in the house and she breaks that door down yo i was like this is intense and honestly claps and bravos are in order for miss zendaya okay she that was a great scene she really to me communicated drug addict someone that is like desperate for what it is that they want you know like a person of on the on the tips of withdrawal and like afraid of that she gave that to me i i if, if she doesn't win something for that scene at, when awards season comes around i would be surprised she did that and and she and rightfully so whatever she wins she deserves it because that was wow that was really good also you know i'm just gonna go ahead and mention in here a little bit if you follow me on instagram which you should at mackie speaks i posted this in my story listen <laughs> a little aggressive zendaya i said okay sensei. i said okay z I see you, Z, you know, like, she was giving me, hit me, go ahead, hit me. I was like, that ain't shaking up, okay? That ain't little Miss MJ on Spider-Man. She is giving me raw, okay? I, you know, I liked what I saw, I'll leave it at that. I'm looking at my notes, y'all. She, I wrote, she tweaked out, this is wild, it was very wild. But what was even crazier? You hear Jules's voice in the background. We flushed them. Cause she's like, you know, she's looking for her drugs and you just hear Jules, we flushed them. I'm like, not Jules is in the house. Not Jules is in the house. And her mom's like, yeah, you embarrassed? You were, I was like, first of all, I don't, know, I don't know the mom's name or the character's name, but I was like, baby, pipe down. Okay, relax because we know you feeling like you got a little win here, but mom, you have not been on your stuff. And this is not what you need to be excited about that you just embarrassed your drug addict daughter. Um, I mean, maybe she was going for a, a perspective of like, if you are embarrassed, maybe you'll see yourself. Maybe if you're confronted around people that you truly care about, because obviously it's not enough for me to see you like this or your sister to see you like this. Maybe you need people that you like, feel like understand you to see you like this. And I get that. I get that. But just her like, you embarrassed right now? I was like, all right. <laughs> you know, but that, ooh, Jules being in the house, that was wild. That was really, 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 really wild. Um, and you could tell she was embarrassed. Like, her character was embarrassed in that moment, but still not enough. She was also, she, like, went through those steps of, like, grievances where she was like, oh, I'm angry. She was like, then she kind of accepted it for a little bit. No, acceptance is last. I don't even know the steps in order, so I'm not going to try to parlay the scene in that way. But you could just see her going through different emotions, like, just, oh, I'm mad. And then, or, or like, I'm shocked, I'm embarrassed. And then it just like settled into this anger. And then, and you know, after she did her yelling, after she did her speech, after she hit my boy Elliot, okay, that was wild. Um, you know, she came to this, this like regret period where she's like, I regretted saying that. But you know what I like about that scene? They're showing you the pitfalls of what drug addiction looks like. It's not all glitter and rave parties. Like it gets 
bad. It gets lonely. It gets isolating. Um, I like how they showed her bartering, how she goes from like, you know, oh man, I, I, I'm flipping stuff over to like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then back to like anger because that's what a drug addict does. Like they play on emotions because they understand people around them care about them. You know, this isn't from for a lot of drug addicts. I can't speak for all drug addicts, but in this case, it's not her having a lack of of care you know it's not her having a lack of people who like rock with her it's really like i don't know and and i'm getting ahead of myself because i wrote this note later um about the connection that the show keeps making to like how she's gotten here or why she's here and my my like reservations with that so i won't get into it right now let's just keep going let's just keep going okay little last note about this like first scene um when they drive when you know rue's mom finally gets her to calm down and say let's go to the hospital rue they drive past and they see elliot outside like smoking a cigarette and i understand cigarettes are not like drugs you know what i mean like but personally i don't like them i don't think you should smoke cigarettes i don't you know the damage to the body is damage to the body regardless if it's like through the brain or through the lungs or whatever the case may be um but him to be standing out there how you gonna snitch on me bro how you gonna snitch on me about doing drugs and then do drugs outside my house he should have left am i wrong when i saw him i was like not him standing outside smoking watching her go to rehab i mean well that's spoiler that's where she was they were actually trying to take her was to rehab um she thought she was going to the hospital um, but like not you outside my house smoking after you gonna snitch on me, bro Like you need to get in this car too clearly because you can't even save face Long enough to like go to your house. You gotta stop and pit smoke out my out in front of my home Why I go to re and she turns around looking like Can I have a cigarette? Like it just gave me like not 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 like I can't believe you vibe vibes But more like can I hit that like just real Like get out of here Elliot Anyway, okay, so she finds out that she is going to the re, to going to rehab and actually not actually the hospital and like that whole moment of her like I can't do it mom I can't stay clean like da 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 and she jumps out that car girl jumping out that car I said Z Ruru what but again I enjoy Sam Levinson and the directors behind Euphoria showing that look drug addict drug addiction is messy like where you get to a point where like your own life despite or your own life even outside of drugs like you can't you can't take care of yourself even like not when you're doing drugs it's like there's a level of or there's a lack of care that you have for yourself not to say she didn't care about her getting hit by the cars but like to even take that risk and moving traffic because you don't want to go to rehab because you because you don't want to stick to this to this program it's just very interesting and i say that because I, I don't know if you guys heard, but recently the D.A.R.E. program criticized Euphoria for their use of drugs and their portrayal of drugs. And people were kind of, you know, um, not understanding of that situation because it's like, how can you look at Euphoria and think like drugs are fun, you know? But I do understand kind of both sides because, yes, when you look at Rue's character or Zadea's character as Rue, you think like, Yo, I sh never want to touch drugs. Like, she is wilding right now. But then also, like, when you look at the portrayal of drugs through maybe, like, an Elliot and a Jules, like, smoking weed in a, in a, um, in a bedroom and, like, talking and, like, falling for each other, it kind of seems interesting, right? It, it kind of seems like something that maybe you might want to partake in because it, it, it's, like, this connection of, like, intimacy um, connected to it. So I get it. But also, like, I enjoy that he upped it. Like, Sam Levinson is upping it a notch in episode five to show, like, yeah, 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 cute. It starts cute, but, like, then we get here, where you're, like, running in traffic, running from... We're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, let's keep going. So, Ruth starts running, and she ends up at Cassie and Lexi's house, okay? Um, I guess at this point she's really going through withdrawals, which is interesting. I don't know like if when the scene starts, if she had just woken up and she was like planning to do her drugs for the day and just hadn't gotten to it yet. But it seems like the, the effects of withdrawal kicked in a lot faster after Rue knew she couldn't do drugs anymore, you know? And that could be a mind thing, right? The mind is so powerful. So she could have been in this position of like, oh, now I know I'm in danger. I'm in at risk of going to withdrawal. Like, and now like those processes are speeding up. Kind of like 
when you anticipate maybe that you'll have a headache, if you stay up too long and study, you might start to actually feel the effects of a headache, like that kind of thing. So maybe that's what was going on, but I was like, you know, she looked like she was chilling, like talking about some junk text me, do what you gotta do, you know? And then all of a sudden she's like, can I use your bathroom? I need your bathroom, you know? Like it just was like, whoa, okay, cool. But um, yeah, so she ends up at Lexi's house and you know, some drama goes down, but I, when I put a little note about Lexi and a lot of people have been talking about Lexi's character on Twitter and oh fun fact her name is Maud Apatow Apito? is it Apato Apatow her dad her dad is Judd Apatow however you say it, I think it's Apatow I think that's how you pronounce the name but her dad is like a famous actor too so I was like okay Euphoria I see that nepotism but honestly I'm not mad at nepotism I mean I'm mad at nepotism because I don't benefit from it but like I want to employ nepotism for my children like I want to get to a place in life where my kid is like yeah I know my mom is Mackenzie so of course you know I don't want my kids to benefit from nepotism so I'm a little salty I don't get the benefit from it but I ain't mad at you Maud or maid however you say her name I'm not mad at you but anyway so Lexi um is they talked about on Twitter because they always pan to Lexi and her face is like either like hmm like you can tell she's thinking of something she want to go write down for like her play or something or like you know she's like she just gives the she's just she's there for face right she's there to give you facial realness like oh this is some tea right now we're like Hmm, I have to write this down later. Like she's, you know, she's telling you a story with her face. And I put on there uh, in my notes, Lexi plotting another scene because like Rue is in there clearly going through withdrawal and like talking to Lexi and Cassie's mom. And like, you just see her face like, like just change all these facial expressions. I said, she over here trying to write the next act of her play. If she don't help Rue, if she don't take Rue to the bathroom, you know, this is this long exchange, mom, can you just give her a second? She needs to go to the bathroom. If you don't help, Lexi. Anyway, so then the scene at the house, uh, you know, Rue finally gets to go to the bathroom. She comes back out and of course her mom is there. I don't know how her mom knew that she'd be at Cassie's house. I don't know that she ever mentions Cassie at home, like even in season one, I could be wrong, but her mom knew that she would be there. So she's in the living room. Uh, Rue, get your stuff. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't want to go. I'm not going to rehab, mom. I can't sustain. I can't stay clean. And here come Cassie with her little sunny side up attitude. Girl, this is not the time for sugar and spice. This is the time for crack rocks and rehab. You tripping right now? She talking about some. You don't have to. Just take it one day. At Mind your business, huh? Mind your business. And Rue, what she do? She had to let her know mind her business. Okay. She said, um, hey Cassie. How long you been, Nate, how long you been, can I just curse on this channel? Should I curse on my channel? How long you been fucking Nate, Cassie? What's the tea with that? Oh, I said no. Not rude and snitch. And again, Sam Levinson's portrayal of like how a drug addict does not care that we're friends. I, I, what was it, last episode or the episode before last? They're all in the bathroom. Hi, Ru Ru. Like Cassie's like, hi, Ru Ru. Like we're supposed to be homies. Are you gonna tell my secrets? One, Cassie didn't even know Rue knew, so that was like a complete shock, I'm sure, to her. But, like, that it just goes to show you how when you're on that, like, she went for the jugular. She felt like Cassie had betrayed her by, like, standing in favor with her mom's request of taking her to rehab. And so she was like, ain't you the same thought that was getting in the car the other night? That one you? Let's talk about that. Since you want to, since you since you know my tea, what, what about your tea? Let's put your tea on the table. And you know, y'all, that is the moment we as the audience have been waiting for because they are like, they're the, the show has been like inching us in, right? With like putting Cassie and Maddie together in the same outfit while Nate is like going back and forth through the school, or like, or like uh, Maddie's showing Cassie, oh, um, calling Cassie being like, oh, Nate texting me the sweetest thing. Like, just put it, oh, the, the, the first episode with the, was it the first, I'm pretty sure it's the first episode with Cassie in the bathtub, like, while Maddie and, uh, or Maddie's outside the door trying to get in after Cassie and Nate just, like, had sex in the bathroom at a party. And she's laying in the bathtub when Maddie comes in to actually use the bathroom. Then old dude from, uh, BMF, great show, by the way comes into the bathroom and is like trying to talk to her. Now this girl's just laying in the tub all night. Like they didn't give us so many moments. Maddie's birthday party where it's at Cassie's house in a hot tub. Here comes Nate in the hot tub with them. Like 
Bro, so many moments of us being like, is she gonna find out? Is Maddie gonna get the tea today? Is it today? And girl, Rue said, nah, it's today. It's right now. I got you, We're right now. Now, my problem with that situation with Cassie finding out, or Maddie finding out that Cassie had been sleeping with Nate, I didn't think Maddie came as hard as we thought she was gonna come. What did you guys think about that? Um, me personally, I feel like they built up her finding out so much. And then, you know, us as the audience, like through social media, through Twitter, we're like, oh, when she finds out, she's gonna, uh, da, 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 da. she's gonna air her out. Like she's gonna, whatever. And so like the actual moment of her finding out really felt anticlimactic, at least to me. I'm like, she kind of mad. Like, oh, I'm about to get violent. That's another thing too. Like. Tone down the black for me for like a second, you know? Um, I know she's probably like, her character is probably like some sort of ethnic, you know? So I guess like it could be argued that like her culture, you know, gets a little rowdy too. But like the calm down, I'm about to get violent. Ooh, da 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 da. I was like, you know what I mean? Like, okay. Um, I've seen it done. We've seen it done multiple times. I feel like the idea of being angry and then having to try on black woman traits seems a little problematic to me. Um, even with the nails, she has the nails on and she's like, you know, I was like, okay, cool. Like if this is the way you express your anger, fine. But like, she didn't even really seem that angry to me. She never touched Cassie. I, I feel like at least a little hair grab should have been like, girl, you got me, you know, and drug her a little bit. She. And then Cassie with that little pitiful cry. Ooh, girl. Sydney Sweeney, baby girl, the, the actress who plays Cassie, she is getting her crying award this year. She has to keep coming up with tears, keep coming up with a rosy face. And I mean, I just wish it was more. We got Cat in the background with the guys, not the right time. You know, it just, I could have been so much more. And I understand the conflict of like, Rue has her stuff going on over here at the same time. So maybe like we, it's harder to like really focus on this. But like, then, then, then tell her at another time. You know, I feel like that's a ball drop by the directors as well as the actresses. Cause it's like, this is a moment like we the audience have been waiting for and y'all didn't give it to us. Y'all didn't serve it to us, you know? Let's do a little side note. Has anybody noticed that Kat's character is like obsolete this season? Literally, this last episode, she probably had like two lines. One of them was like, Cassie, that's really bad. Or Cass, that's really fucking bad, you know? And then like, guys, not right now. Like, then, like she has no lines this season, no story arc, no storyline. I mean, she started off with the whole, I don't like my boyfriend thing. And like, she's struggling with her self-confidence or whatever. But what happened? Like last season, she was like a cam girl. She was like dominatrix. You know, she was showing up to school looking like a baddie. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, a dominatrix baddie, but a baddie no, nonetheless, you know? And this season, she's giving me nothing. Even her outfits are giving me nothing. Even in that scene, she looks cute with her little tiger print, uh, like wrap top thing and like the little spike hair situation she had going on. But it was, it was giving more like mom, like hot mom rather than like sexual teenager, you know? I don't know. Um, but let me tell you what I do know, okay? Or what I've heard, I should say. There's, there's suspected to be a little bit of drama on set, possibly among the actresses, you know, a little, like somebody's getting a little too big for their britches, if, if the world only knew who you really were type energy. But some real tea is suspected between the character that plays Kat, uh, Barbie Ferrer, and Sam Levinson, the creator of the show. Apparently those two have gotten into it about possibly the progression of Kat's character, like him writing things for her character and her not agreeing with that. And um, you know, that has been causing arguments. She actually didn't even go to the premiere of Euphoria. So like when Euphoria premiered a couple weeks back, there was like a red carpet event and she didn't even show up, you know? So it's, it's seeming very like a little, a little messy between them and look at the end of the day sam's got creative freedom of that show he's got the pen so if you making the director mad now i'm not saying like you take anything that's thrown at you if it's disrespectful but it's like i don't know it's, it's, it's a 
a situation up for debate. Like, do you guys think in a situation where you're an actress on a show, you should be made aware of what's going to happen to your character, like, before it happens or, like, you know, in, in advance before it happens? Or... Do you think that, like, if you are given information about your character that you don't agree with, that, like, it should be changed? Now, I know there's room for notes. Um, uh, even Zendaya has talked about notes she's given, and I'll get into that uh, in a second because I want it ties into this. But let me finish this thought. Do you think, like, if your notes, if, like, let's say you give notes on your character, like, and they're not taken, that, like, that's an issue and, like, you have to stand your ground? I feel like it's, it's a situational kind of complex. Um... You, I feel like in some in some instances, yes, like you should be able to be like, yo, I'm not doing this, and like stand on it. But I don't know. It's Sam's show. Like I said, Sam's got that pin at the end of the day, and Sam said to her lines this season, to her to her story arc this season. He said, okay, girl, shoo shoo, you know. And that probably means that there was some sort of beef in the first season. I don't know if she didn't like what her character had to do first season. Or if she read this season script and she wasn't in it as much and she had tea. I don't know. Okay, I'm not really sure. We do know that they've been renewed for a third season. We don't know what is all going to happen to her character in this season. I think there's like three more episodes. So I guess we'll see. But yeah, it's some beef. It's some TT. Okay, it's some TT. But speaking of notes, I saw an interview with Zendaya where she talks about, you know, the red sweater that she wears into, in the show and how the red sweater is tied to her dad's character. Like how he, that was his sweater and so she wears it because she misses her dad. That was actually a note from Zendaya, guys. Uh, she, I think, was given this red sweater as like a costume design just to show like a drug addict, like somebody who's like, you know, like, oh, I don't care, like type energy. And she suggested, like, could we do some kind of like backstory where like the sweater is connected to her father to, to show sentiment to the father? And she actually pulled from her own personal experiences in life. She said her mom like drove a car around for a long time that was really beat up and bad. But it was because her dad had like the same car or something like that. Or it was her dad's car or something. And when her dad passed, her mom's dad passed, so Zendaya's grandfather passed, it was like that connection and she wanted to keep it going. And so Zendaya drew from that inspiration for her character and Sam put it in the script. So I guess there are some aspects to Sam. And I've also heard Alexa Demi, uh, the girl who plays Maddie, say that like, yeah, like Sam's like very open to us giving, in, giving insight, giving our own opinions about like what should happen in the show and like if he likes it he'll throw it in there so i'm not sure how my girl barbie is coming at sam and like this is all speculation like i don't know none of this could be true this could just be like the progression of her character this is how it's supposed to go but like we do know she didn't go to the premiere she could have been busy but smelling a little it's smelling like fresh tea somewhere okay i don't know if somebody put a pot on it but it's smelling like fresh tea somewhere so, I don't know. I just want to share that with you guys. Maybe if you guys know anything more about it, maybe you can leave it in the comments. We could dish together, but that's what I heard. So next we see Rue leave Cassie and Lexi's house. She's on the run at this point. She ends up at Fez's house. And to me, that moment that she's at Fez's house and she's like looking for drugs, it seemed very full circle moment. Cause if you guys remember in season one, she did the same thing. She's like beating on his door. Like, I just need, I need something fast. Like I need something. And even that, that season, season one, he like doesn't give in. He doesn't let her in. And she's like, I hate you. I hate you fast. You know what I mean? Like she's very like, I need you. And then I hate you. You know, like very, very drug addict behavior, trying to play on the emotions of the person that she's dealing with in order to get what she wants. Right. But I just made a note, like, that's so sad. Like, it was so sad to see her back at Fez's house, like, needing drugs and just in this vulnerable state of, like, I just need help, but, like, the wrong kind of help. And Fez, like, he stood his ground once again. He invited her in this time to, like, use the bathroom, thinking, like, you know, this is my sister. I'm trying to help her in whatever way I can that's not going to hurt her. You know, I'm, I don't want to give her drugs, but, like, if she needs to use the restroom and she needs a place to stay, like, I feel like he would offer her that. You know, it's like, he gives me that energy. But, like, to see her trying to steal his grandma's pills or whoever's pills in his house, oh, that broke my heart. That he had to make that tough decision, like, I love you, but you have to go. Like, you have to go. He was like, we ain't doing that today. We ain't doing that. Like, get out. And he literally physically has to throw her out the house. 
That made me so sad. I'm like, bro, she's losing everyone. Because obviously, we don't know the ramifications of what she started with the whole Cassie Maddie situation, but we know it can be good. You know, we know at least Cassie's going to be mad at her. We'll see what Maddie feels. Maddie could end up being mad at her too because it's like Bruce said, uh, you like this was last month. Like, so you knew for a month or so, and like you still didn't, like you kept that to yourself. Like, I don't know if I can trust you either. Now we got Fez throwing her out the house. We know her her mom and Gia like love her, but like, you know, you, you can see in the car when uh they're looking for her, when Gia and the mom are looking for Zendaya, like the mom is like, Could you get off your phone and, and help find your sister? I feel like even her sister, even her family, they're like starting to slowly check out of being there for her. And it just makes me so sad. Like I wrote that down, like she's losing everyone because she want to be a hothead because she want to do some drugs you know and it's like people who are new in her life who maybe aren't at their as so much as their with wits in with her oh and i meant to say this earlier too the reason why the mom i feel like brought jules in because it's like zendaya is less or sorry rue is less likely to be influenced so much by what her mom and her sister think of her because those are her mom and her sister like the relationship she has with them is like an elastic like band you know it's gonna stretch further than it would maybe with like a jewels or somebody that's not like ingrained to love her you know and um it's it's so sad that she's it, like you can see the progression of even those people checking out on her like with gia like like just be you know what i mean it's like i feel like gia is just like i'm sick of being yelled at i'm sick of crying because gia's also been you know having to have her face full of tears for a long time as well and it's like, it's just, it's really sad. It's really sad because it's like, I know she knows that this is affecting the people who love her, but it's like, as a drug addict, you don't care. Or you can't care, you know, because you're too busy focused on like what, what it is that you need. Like drug addicts are very selfish, you know, regardless as to what the reason is for why they do drugs. It's like, that selfishness is still very apparent. Then we see her further running around, right? She breaks into these people's homes who I guess are not, characters in the show but they just happened to be leaving when she was passing and she was able to go into their home and she's stealing their jewelry stealing their money thank god she gets away because they catch her in the house right but i that made me sad too i put a, i put stealing sad face like i wrote that out like stealing sad face and then i drew a sad face like it's so sad like i feel like we are rooting for our girl Ru, but it's like i don't even know if we can call her that anymore and she kind of even broke that down to us like uh Rue's character like Zendaya's character Rue she broke that down for us in one of the episodes where she like did that like school scene in the season where she was like you know I know you you want to root for a character and blah 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 and, like you want to see the character win but like that's just not me you know like she's letting you know like I'm not here to give you the feels I'm not here to go to rehab and come back a changed girl changed woman like that's just not what I got for you you know but still like it's interesting because I'm, trying, I'm like, now I'm getting into like the psychological motivation for the show. And it's like, we as an audience, we love Zendaya, right? We, for, for people who are in my generation, we saw her on Shake It Up. Like that was like the last era of Disney Channel that I watched. And I'm sure people my age who watched. So it's like, we started off with her like, oh, cute little fun, fresh faced girl. And then we see her do a little bit of music, you know? Then we see her doing all these big movies and stuff. It's like, so you like her. And you, but, but now you're forced to be like, do I, do I, you want to, because it's like, we know our relationship with who the character is being played by, but Ooh, that girl is good. Cause I'm starting to be like, Zendaya, I'm about to write your mama DM too. You know, cause, cause you're, you're, you, you giving me, you giving me chaos and I need it to stop. So then we got the cop chase, right? I guess the people who, no, 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 no. I was going to say, I, I, I guess the people who she was stealing from called the cops, but no, the cops just rolled up on her. Maybe they were just regular patrolling or they had gotten a call about a robbery in the area or what. I don't know. But she, the girl throws up because she's withdrawing this whole time. She throws up and like the cops are like, yo, she's on something like we got to go get her, blah, blah, blah. So now ensues this, this big chase. And that's where I wanted to mention the nod that I caught um, that Sam Levinson included in this episode of Euphoria. It was a nod to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So because if you guys remember or if you've ever seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, he's getting chased by what I think like his principal or like a, if it's not his principal, it's like a, like a, like a truancy officer or something like that. And they have to go through all of these homes and backyards. He's jumping over fences and stuff like that, just like Zendaya did. So that was definitely a nod to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, um, which I thought was, oh, 
oh, okay, you know, I, I, I appreciated the nod, which is what I know Sam Levinson wanted people who have seen Ferris, Ferris Bueller's Day Off to do. So, mission accomplished, Sam. But also, I personally, about the chase scene, while it was interesting to see her interact with all these random people that we don't know in the show, I thought it went on a little too long. But you know what, though? Right as I was saying, like, yo, this is a little long, and I was making that note, it stopped. So I guess, like, they took me right there, and it was like, okay, we're done. You know? But I was like, okay, I don't care. And, you know, that's another thing about this show. Oh, yes, my pen lights up as well. Um, that's another thing about this show is that I think that, oh, and this is a great time for it to do that, because I got a scene of Zendaya uh, with the cops in the blue and red light so yes we love a connection connection moment thank you spirit yes god bless um but what was i gonna say um what was i oh yes um sometimes i have trouble remembering what euphoria is about is does anybody else have that it's like there's things that happen in the show but like what is the show about is it about rouge drug addictness is it about or drug addiction is it about just like some kids in high school being wild. Like, cause I feel like we don't spend enough time on anything to really know what the show is about. Literally last episode, we had a whole montage of devotion to Cal and like how he grew up and like the fact that he's, you know, feeling like repressed and stuff. It's like, what is this show even about? And I think it's really clear that question for me during moments like this where that scene was like going on forever. I was like, that's runtime that we could have went back and visited what was going on with Maddie. Cassie and Kat. Maybe that's something that they're trying to hold over into like next episode, but it's like by next episode, do I buy it? Do like if it's at, if it's if we're at school and we're just shunning Cassie in the hallway, like so, you know what I mean? I want to see some like you know, or, or or maybe that wasn't what we needed to visit on. Maybe we could have visited on more of the mom and Gia and their dynamic without Rue, but like having to deal with the effects of Rue, right? Or What's going on? Uh, I was gonna say maybe what's going on with Fez. I don't really care that much about what's going on with Fez, like outside of the, his relationship to like Rue and the other characters. Um, so I don't know what they could have used that time for. There's, I guess, multiple different options, but it's like just having all that time of her running around was like, cause I don't even think it's that long in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you know? Cause, but, but I can tell you what Ferris Bueller's Day Off is about. It's about somebody who skips school and like the shenanigans that they get into because of skipping school and how they have to like put everything back into its place in order to not get, like, yeah, I can tell you the plot line. Whereas Euphoria, I feel like if you were to ask me what Euphoria is about, like I could tell you what I think, or I could tell you what this past episode made me think it's about, but it's like, I don't have a concrete answer. And I wonder if other people feel the same way. When they were showing all those clips of Zendaya, like strung out looking, like sweating, snotting, throwing up, it just is really, really sad. And it's honestly interesting because it's like the D.A.R.E. program, how I mentioned earlier about how they had, you know, a problem with the fact that Euphoria was showing drug addiction and they, they were saying, oh, it's gonna entice people, young people to wanna do drugs. If they had just waited just a little bit, they would have gotten to this episode and it does not look glamorous at all. Like the fact that we see her literally stealing and I guess we find out later on that she was stealing because she realized the drugs of which she literally promised her life in a previous episode to keep safe and to promote and to sell and to bring back money for because the lady was like i will have you kidnapped and sold to awful people right she had to like maybe collect jewelry in order to like go back and and, and suffice that or whatever but it's like just the pitfalls of drug addiction don't look glamorous when it's done like that when you're stealing when you're breaking into homes when you're tearing up your family tearing up your house when you are screaming in the faces of people you love, when you're ruining relationships and, and, and airing out dirty secrets and, and laundry, dirty laundry amongst people that you care about. It don't look that glamorous, their program. It really does not. And I hope that if young people are watching this, they don't think like, oh, I wanna be like, like real. Like if I do drugs, I'll be Zendaya. Like, no, 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 Zendaya is not doing drugs. This is Rue doing drugs. And I did hear that Euphoria is kind of like a play on the creator, Sam Levinson, like his life as a kid. Um, so maybe at some point we'll see Rue's character get clean because I'm assuming he had to in order to be like this level-headed director or maybe he's still getting high. I don't know. Alleged, you know, for entertainment purposes only, <laughs> you know? Um, but I don't know. Like, I can't see how you would look at somebody like Zendaya's character and uh, play a role and think like, I'm gonna go do, I'm gonna go do hard drugs. That sounds, that sounds cute. 
Mm -mm, not me. I forgot. I forgot, bro, that Rue's name was short for Ruby. I, this whole time I've been like, what is her name? Like, I get that they're calling her Ruby, but what is her name? And that lady that she got those drugs from is like, Ruby Bennett, I believe. Ruby Bennett or whatever. And I was like, oh, I forgot that girl's name was Ruby. Okay. Yeah, that whole situation with her being at the lady's house that she got drugs from was very, that's where the anxiety was really, it was, it was building during the, the cop chase, but it was honing. And when she's talking to the lady that gave her the drugs, because first of all, the lady's giving pretty solid advice about, or facts about drug use and how like it messes with the brain and it, it literally destroys your brain's ability to feel happiness. Like, which I, I, I mean, I knew, but it's like, I didn't completely know it from that regard. Like I didn't know like the big picture of it all, you know? Oh, and I meant to say this too earlier. Sorry, sorry, a little segue, sorry. I meant to say, um, even that moment with like real, I mean not real, Jules and Elliot and they're smoking weed and I use that as an example of like how maybe kids might feel like drugs are fun because they're becoming intimate. Like she's eventually gonna sleep with him. And that's what I didn't say earlier too when I was like, we already not rocking with Jules cause she slept with Elliot. Mm. But um, even that's dangerous. Let me just say that. Medical research shows us that the brain is not fully developed, at least until age 25. And, and that's probably on a case by case basis. There's probably some brains that need even longer than that. So when you're putting substances into your body, dangerous, harmful drug, drug substances into your body at young ages, like 17, 16, 15 years old, that's not good either. So even that looking glamorous is not so glamorous, you know? And it's like this lady breaking down drug facts to Rue in this moment while I know Rue is like cracked out and like tweaked out and stuff and like does is not trying to hear that she just want to feel better but I was like oh I'm hoping people are listening to this like drugs like they really take your ability to even be happy but then what she said she was like oh but you know it's okay the bright side is it it makes bad things like not so bad or something like that because your brain kind of loses the ability to feel like things that are sucky aren't so sucky and I was like ah they're worse, you know what I mean? Oh, nah, they're worse, okay? Don't do that. But then, girl, what she do? She starts saying like, you know, but it's okay because we as women, like we have the ability to like still make money, like like basically suggesting prostitution to Rue. So I don't know if that's like some sort of foreshadowment of like maybe we're gonna see Rue so desperate for drugs because I'm about to get into why she might be so desperate for drugs. But that we might see her so desperate for drugs that she starts selling her body. I mean, look, we already saw Kat in season one, like, doing cam girl stuff, like, selling her, her body and sexual favors over camera, right? And she didn't even do it. She wouldn't even do it for drugs. So who's to say? And that would be so crazy because it's like Rue is, like, the least sexual character of the whole show. So to really see her, like, maybe prostitute herself out for some, some crack, some morphine, ooh, I... Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. So then we get to the bath scene, right? Rue is just like, she just needs some sort of relief. Like, dude, you don't have any pills? Oh my gosh, that was so sad. Just to see in her bag for like any type of drugs. Oh, that was so sad. It was also interesting too how respectful Rue was to this lady. She wasn't like, like going off on her too. And again, I think that goes back to the theory of like, um, the elasticity of relationships, right? She can go in on her mama and her sister because like that's my family they have to love me she can go slightly higher in on I'm, I'm sorry slightly lesser in on friends that she's close to because like yeah they're not my mom and my sister they might not love me as long but they're my family too like they they love me to a, a certain extent so i'm gonna still stretch the band but it's like this drug lady who has threatened to sell me to a family um that would harm me it's real tight, right? My, my rubber band is real tight. And you know, that's one thing I've always said. It's like, the drug addicts, like, you know, they go through to their lengths and stuff. It's like, but they not, they not stupid. They got common sense enough to know, like, what they can and cannot get away with. You ever seen a person on drugs in the street screaming, right? What they be screaming though? All the time. Profanity, right? They always screaming curse words. It's like, why are y'all screaming the same stuff? It's like, y'all know what y'all doing. Y'all doing this for the shock value. Y'all want to be looked at. It's like, there's a little bit of tweak of common sense going on in there. And we see that with Rue. It's like, she just been going in on everybody. Get your hands off me. And da, 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 you know what I mean? Getting thrown out of places. But she was, she knew how to be respectful to that lady. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know? 
yeah but we knew the, the lady already knew Rue was gonna crack and crack <laughs> we already the lady already knew that Rue was gonna say like just give me what you have you know I'll just she she, she ends up saying just I'll take whatever you have and the lady only has like the the needle method of drugs and guys I'm gonna just show y'all a picture of my notes I'm gonna put it somewhere on the screen but I was like bad scene I'm stressed no and I drew a needle and I quit getting her hooked I'm so sad like I could not believe they took it there with the injection into the arm I was like bro this is just, this is what she doesn't need you know what I'm saying now she didn't open up a whole nother can of like what the you know the, if this girl starts like tying up her arm I'm gonna I'm gonna call Zendaya. I'm gonna call her personally up and be like, Z, babe, what's up? You got something to tell us? Because at this point, I don't even know if you acted, babe. If you in Hollywood, are you okay? Is Sam okay? Like, is the writers of this show okay? And I often ask myself that because this show really pushes the boundaries and it is supposed to betray young people, like teenagers. I know the characters are not being played by teenagers, but I'm still like, what do y'all think? of teenagers like what do y'all think is happening with teenagers like all these kids having sex and like doing drugs it's just a little too much for me personally so yeah so then yeah she gets her little drug she can sink into the tub you know what i'm saying she high good for her cool whatever she ends up sleeping at this lady's house and i guess they put her in a bed i don't even know maybe she put herself in the bed that wasn't clear um but she wakes up in this house and she finds out all the doors and all the windows are locked and when they're locked they like are locked with like 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 locks not like the door we locked the door to go to sleep though like locks and her her crazy self is stuck and i'm when i tell y'all like god i'm like literally god please let her get out please let her get out please let her get out. like this is not real but they pushed me to the point of anxiety that i was like i can't like i she gotta get out of here jesus like just give her one more chance jesus she just need one more chance you know one more chance that's a show too Ooh. That's a whole nother video. But she finally, she gets out because she she goes into the actual room of the drug at, or drug uh, seller lady and I guess her husband because it was in the same bed. And she sneaks out of that window. And when they showed a scene of her like hanging off and she's about to get free, I was like, thank you. <laughs> and then you see the car drive out and there's more anxiety because it's like, is she going to make it through this gate? It's like, she's still like withdrawing, like trying to get to the gate, but she... She kicked it up and she made it through and I was like, okay, good, 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 good. And the show ends with her going back home, I, I'm guessing, because they show her mom in the kitchen and like the door opens and she's like, Rue, but they don't tell you if it's Rue. So it might not even be Rue, y'all. I don't know, but it's somebody that has the key. So I'm assuming it's Rue, but we'll have to wait and see the next episode to see if like Rue actually makes it home or like what happens. Um, but yeah, y'all, that episode was crazy crazy and it's crazy also too going back to my whole conversation about like sometimes I struggle to know what the show is about it's crazy that like we're in episode five and like I feel like it's starting to heat up you know that's that's say that with a grain of salt too because you know there have been moments that have been spicy like the whole Cassie Nate situation but even that kind of got like after they showed the montage of, of, of them having sex like multiple multiple times I kind of was like call me when she finds out you know um and then we had a whole episode dedicated to like Cal and then him finally telling his family he's like gay or whatever and I was just like okay cool he's 30 million years old I don't care about him you know but it's like things are starting to heat up we're in episode five and I think the season only has eight episodes so that's kind of that's kind of disheartening because now we have to wait after those three episodes. They better do a lot in those three episodes is basically what I'm saying. Because after that, we have to wait all the way until they film and put out another season. So we shall see. We shall see. Um, so let me just do a couple little last minute comments that I kind of wanted to talk about as far as the themes of the show. We just went through the whole episode, but let's talk about a little bit of the themes. So what I've noticed is like they do a lot after every episode like some kind of beautiful cinem cinematic way of showing like Rue's real issue is the fact that she lost her dad she just misses her dad a lot right and it's like they keep trying to show me that to like I guess justify why she is where she is and to show us that like you know she's hurt or whatever like ha have some sympathy for her she's a person and I get that but it's like what else I want them to switch it up you know I feel like 
I know her dad died. I know she's sad about her dad. I, you keep giving me these clips about, you know, oh, she's sad about her dad. And I get that. I, I can't even imagine being in her own situation. I rebuke that, that thought from even existing. That doesn't even exist, you know? But it's like, what else? Like, show me how she started drugs. Like, who got her into drugs? Was she doing drugs before her dad died? Show me the life she lived as a, as a teenager before her dad passed. Was she, like, happy? Was she a good student? But keep bringing me to the, the cinematic explanations of, like, the same answer. She said, I know. I know. You know? So that was just my little tidbit about that. Because um, they did, I really though, I will say like the episode that they did that where she walks in the church and the guy is singing and she hugs him. And then, you know, he's wearing like the red jacket, like same color as her dad's jacket. Again, with the jacket and the connection of the jacket, which is really being played up thanks to my girl Z for implementing that tip about, you know, making the jacket connected to her dad. So I love that. But I liked that scene. I think that was cool. That was powerful. And then the guy singing transforms into her dad. And then she's hugging her dad. But like that whole come to Jesus moment, a literal come to Jesus moment where she's in the church walking. I like that. That was beautiful to watch. But again, we had that already. So now why is this episode ending with her, um, you know, going to her dad's funeral and stuff like that. And her wearing his jacket. It's like, I heard you. I want to see something else, you know? Well, that's just my tidbit. I do, though, admire the love that they're still showing is existing between Rue and Jules. Because let me explain this. When she, even though she has been, in her brain, betrayed by Jules, right? Jules has told her mom she does drugs. And now she's in this compromising, embarrassing position where she's flashed out on her mom, broken doors and all that kind of stuff in front of people that otherwise she wouldn't want to see her like this, right? If you notice, she gets all in Jules' face, screaming at her, I don't love you, I'm done with you, you're the worst thing I ever did, you left me, all that kind of stuff, right? But she never airs out Jules' laundry, dirty laundry. She never is like, you had sex with Cal, you have sex on camera, you had sex with all these She never is like laying out her secrets. I feel like that's a good sign of like the love that still exists between Rue and Jules because People say oftentimes like how a person is when they get angry is a good indicator of who they are always, like inside. Maybe it's not even that they hide from you, right? So it's like you really wanna know how a person feels about you, see how it is when they get angry, right? That's not to say like, you know, when other things are on top of that anger, like maybe it's just like a situation that is like long overdue to be over and it's like now y'all are just mean to each other. Not, not that case, but like when you're like in a situation with somebody or a friendship, an intimate relationship, whatever the case may be, how they act when they're mad, how they are on mad day, even if it's not directed towards you, even if they're just punching walls and stuff like that, like how they express that anger is a good indicator of like who they really are underneath all of the like, I know you're watching me stuff, right? And her ability to not air Jules, Jules out, I thought was really classy and like really nice, you know? She did call her a whore, yeah. She did call her a whore, like you love to be loved, but, but she was saying it more in the instance of like, you don't love me, you just like attention. You're a whore, right? Not like, you have sex with men on camera. <laughs> you know, she could have really went there and she didn't, so. We love that for real. Um, even when she's tweaked out, she's still a good person. So that's all I have for you guys for this episode of uh, Euphoria, season two, episode five, uh, called, what is it, The Mockingbird? Stand still like the hummingbird, lol. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I think it was really fun to sit down and talk about it. I would love to do this again if you guys would be interested. Make sure you thumbs up this video, leave me a comment if you enjoyed, if you wanted to discuss some of the things that we discussed in this video, if you want to talk about some of the tea that we discussed in this video, if you know some tea, let me know in the comments below, guys. But yeah, guys, I super enjoyed this. And um, you know, as always, I'm gonna see you soon, okay? Mwah! Bye, guys!